So one thing we need to keep in mind when scuba diving the Great Lakes here is that there are a lot of shipwrecks that are memorial sites to lost sailors. And the biggest storm in recorded history here in the Great Lakes happened in November of 1913. It affectionately goes by several names, but one of those is the White Hurricane. And it was absolutely devastating. Over 250 sailors lost their lives that day, and over 19 ships sank in the Great Lakes during the course of that storm. Evan, today we're going out there and we're diving one of those wrecks that was tragically sunk during that storm. What wreck are we going to see? Today we are going to the Regina. It used to be an old cargo freighter. Right now it sits in about 80 feet of water up to 70 feet at a shallowest point. And it was rediscovered in 1986. The Regina is one of over a dozen shipwrecks that can be found in the Sanilac Shores underwater preserve in Lake Huron. Today, we're diving with Anchor Bay Scuba off a boat called the Go-Between, which is owned and operated by Double Action Dive Charters. Located roughly 8 miles or 12 kilometers southwest of Port Sanilac, Michigan, the Regina was a steel freighter that sunk in a shipping lane that is still in use today. Pulling back from the map, we can see other shipwrecks in the area like the Sport. If you haven't seen our video yet on the Sport, make sure to check it out at the end of this video. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Okay. Got it? Gotcha. The wreck sits in roughly 80 feet or 24 meters of water. Visibility looks good, but it takes some time before the wreck begins to appear before us. But when it does, it's immediately evident that something catastrophic happened. Built in 1907, she only served as a freighter for six years before her sinking. And at 250 feet, or 76 meters long, the Regina was a massive freighter for her time. Sitting completely upside down on the lake floor, the question that runs through our minds is what is the tragic story behind this wreck? Moving down the port side of the ship, we keep our eyes open for clues and know from our dive briefing that up ahead is a massive 56 foot hole in the side of the hull, which makes us wonder if she could possibly have been hit by another ship at some point, or even run aground in the storm of 1913, causing extensive damage and ultimately sinking her. Before we reach the damaged section of the hull, we come across what looks to be the ship's funnel or stack, which would have been used to expel boiler steam and smoke from the two boilers that were used to provide steam to the engine. Continuing towards the bow, we locate the massive hole in the hull. The damage is obviously extensive and most certainly played a role in her sinking.
I've also heard there is an anchor that is stretched out on the lake floor and wonder if it's possible that the Regina was sitting at anchor in the storm when she was struck by another ship. come up on the port bow, we can clearly see one huge anchor still secured in place. But it's evident that the chain of the starboard anchor is extended and still pulled tight. The anchor extends out a good distance from the ship. Not wanting to venture away from the wreck too far, I turn back. The wreck has a ghostly feel to it as it rests forever upside down. Traveling back towards the stern, above what would have been the underside of the ship, we locate a fold in the hull that leads directly up the starboard side to the massive hole. From this perspective, the ragged edge of the gash is clearly evident. We're not sure exactly what happened to the Regina during the worst storm in Great Lakes history, but from local accounts during the height of the storm on the night of November 9, 1913, the waves grew to almost 40 feet or 12 meters, with winds pushing 90 miles an hour. The Regina's captain at some point almost certainly tried to make a run for safe harbor. However, unable to do so, he dropped anchor and abandoned ship with the crew in the lifeboats. The massive hole in the hull does initially appear as if the Regina was struck by another ship, but it's now thought her damage was from being run aground at some point during the storm. On our ascent, we pause at 15 feet or 3 meters as a safety stop, which gives us an opportunity to off-gas some of the nitrogen that we have absorbed into our body tissue while diving. After three minutes at that depth, we safely surface. The wreck of the Regina is now a popular dive site in Sanilac Shores Underwater Preserve, but it's also a memorial site, because even though the crew made it into the lifeboats, they never made it back to shore. Make sure to check out our video on the wreck of the sport next and hit that subscribe button so that you'll never miss a dive. Your support really means a lot to us. Until next time, we'll see you underwater.